Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Strahd campaign, and we stream live on YouTube every Thursday night, 6 p.m. UTC plus one, that's London time, so please check in and watch our live stream of Curse of Strahd. So today I'm going to talk about shopkeepers, how I employ, uh, employ, employ them in the Foundry system, the loot sheet module that I highly recommend using, and some ideas of the different shopkeepers and how to introduce them into your campaign. The first thing, let's talk about loot sheet. Now, I like to use Theater of the Mind Maps. I have made a whole video on that because usually in my shops, characters aren't exploring or in combat, and so I just use these Theater of the Mind Maps, which technically is just a walled off picture with a glass wall. My characters are lined along the bottom with my NPC on top. Now, the loot sheet module is one of the most critical, important modules as a dungeon master that you should incorporate into your campaign if you have any merchants, because it saves you a headache and nightmare of managing online inventories and money exchange, and it makes life really simple for your players as well. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create a merchant. We're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna just use a average villager NPC, drag him into the scene, and what you're going to do is when you open up the character sheet, you typically have your NPC character sheet, which looks something like this. Now, what Loot Sheet does is provide an additional sheet, and you click on Sheets, and you're going to select Loot Sheet 5e NPC and save. Now, what happens is you have this unique looking sheet where you're going to be adding inventory. Now, before you start doing anything, make sure you change the sheet type to Merchant instead of Loot Sheet. When they're in a merchant, there's some additional features that are added, and it also allows the player to come in there and purchase certain items. Now we're gonna go through here and show you how to add items. There are two ways to add items. The first way is the way I recommend. It's a little bit longer, but I believe this gives you absolute control of what you want your inventory to be, and I'll explain that in a little bit why I do that. So to do it that way, you open up your Compodium, um, grab one of your Compodium uh, items, which I have here, and just drag and drop over whatever you would like for your merchant to sell, and it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna just drag over a couple of items here, randomly, nothing of importance. And there's a little um, pencil uh, icon over here. You can click on that and add in the quantity and change the price. So for instance, if I wanna have uh, 10 abacus is in my store, I just type in 10, and if I want the price to be uh, 11, I just type in 11, and now you can see that the quantity is 10 and the price is 11 each. Now when your characters come to the store, you're going to just turn on the permissions for your characters either individually here, or you can click them all on, and they'll see this inventory, and they can click on any one of these items and purchase these items. It'll automatically deduct the money or the gold from their their personal inventory and add that item to their inventory while at the same time reducing the inventory in the merchant sheet. It handles everything for you and this is a great uh, module to use. Now there's another way of adding inventory to your um, merchant sheet and that is through a roll table. Now in my personal experience the roll table hasn't worked out very well for me and perhaps it's user error or perhaps I found something that just needs to be corrected and I don't want to make that assumption at this point. So maybe it's user error and I'm going to show you. And if you've solved this problem, please just leave your comments below so I can continue to use it as well. So I'm going to create a very simple roll table, which I have here. This is a general store. Let me just click these off. And it's a simple roll table and to create a roll table, uh, this video is not about it, but just, you know, select your Compodium. Uh, where you're coming from, type in the exact, the name exactly as it's spelled, it's case sensitive, and update it and you'll see your items here listed. The picture should come up if it's found the item in your Compodium. This is a 1D4 table with just four items. Now, what I'm going to do, it's called General Store, is in my uh, loot sheet, in my merchant sheet, I'm gonna go down to the roll table and I'm gonna select General Store, which I have here. Then I have to select how many items. Well, I only have four items, so I'm gonna select four items down here to, to roll as a 1D4. And I want the quantity of each of those items to be between one and 10. So I'll put in 1D10, I'll click Update, 
and then I'm going to go ahead and roll. Now, obviously, it rolled a 2 on a 1d4, and it put 6 abacuses in and 5 bells in. And this seems to be working just as intended. But you'll notice if I roll a couple of times, I'll do it again here. Oh, that didn't do it, but I'll do it again because I just want to show you something that I had an issue with. Here's one of those examples. In this example, it rolled from the table. I rolled on the first roll uh, a 3 on a 1d4. So it went through the roll table and selected three different items, and then it added the, the random quantity. Well, in this case, it added 2, 2, and 2. Now, in the general store, you'll see that I don't want to have um, two bells and two uh, quantities of two each. I'd rather have just one bell with whatever quantity it's going to have. Now, here's how the tables normally work. There is a button up here called Draw with Replacement. Now, if I have that clicked on and I roll, every time I roll, it will uh, treat the roll as a brand new roll and it might select the abacus a second time. I'll just do this a couple times to show you what I'm talking about. There it goes. It selected the alchemy jug twice. Now if I turn this off, let me just delete this over here, it means when it selects an item from the roll table, it will lock that item and prevent me from drawing it again. So let me demonstrate that for you. So I've rolled here the bell and you can see the lock icon has locked in here. So the next time I roll, I won't be able to roll for a bell again. Now it's an abacus, the abacus is locked. And once I roll again, it will allow me to roll for the abacus or the bell and it selected the alchemy jug. Now I assumed that if I had this clicked off and which it's done and I'm just, just turn these off like this, that the merchant table will do, you know, not allow it to roll again the, the bell once it's been selected or another item. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. And I have, for the life of me, not figure, figured out, maybe it's my, my me doing something wrong, I don't know. So not only for that reason, but for the reason is I want to control the inventory uh, myself for the different merchants. I just drag and drop over here and just change the prices as I, I see fit. Now one of the things on here that's really nice in here to do is the price modifier. So let's say I just have a couple of items, I'm going to drag them in here. And this guy is going to be a, a guy that overcharges for everything. So I click the price modifier and he's going to raise prices up to about 20 something odd percent. And I update it, you'll see all the prices have increased. I can lower the prices by a percentile as well and it lowers all the prices as well. So this price modifier is really easy because you can just increase or decrease the, the prices by percentages. Maybe it's a cheap village, maybe it's an expensive expensive merchant, what have you, you can go ahead and modify that up and down. So that gives you how the, the merchant sheet works. So now I'm going to go through and tell you a little bit about some of my philosophy in running merchants and stores. The first thing that I suggest that you do is read through your campaign to see what stores, if any, are in any villages, towns, or cities that, uh, that your characters are going to engage in. The second thing is decide if any of those unless the campaign explicitly states, decide if any of those merchants or shops, uh, shopkeepers, are going to be woven into the story. Now, here's my tip. Shopkeepers are part of the community, and the shopkeepers sell different types of items. Some of them are very sp specific. Maybe they're a potion. Maybe they're an herbalist. Maybe they're an armory. And so they're going to know unique things about the people that they buy and sell and trade with and the items that they sell. And they might have information that will help your character. So I also look at shopkeepers as clue givers. Now, in your campaigns, a lot of the time is your characters will get stuck. I know this has happened to me as a player, and it's happened to me as a DM. How do your players get the information they need to find that particular item, to solve that mystery, to find the entrance to the cave, or locate an NPC, or solve a crime, whatever it is? Well, the shopkeepers are awesome people to give clues. For instance, what happens if you know someone's been poisoned and you and you have the, the poison, you want to identify the poison or perhaps where the poison was purchased from? Well, where in your village would you go to find that information? Probably either the herbalist or the potion shop. And this person, this shopkeeper can probably identify that particular poison 
or probably tell you who may have purchased it. So they're a great, uh, a shopkeeper is great for giving clues. Now, one of the shopkeepers that I like to add at least somewhere in my entire campaign, whether it's in a big city or a small village, is the bookstore. And I have a bookstore in, in every one of my campaigns for simply one reason. Books are a great source of information. They're a great source for providing quests, um, giving some backstory and helping give clues. Now I'm playing in the Curse of Strahd and I have two very important books that are in my campaign. The first book that I've created and what Foundry does is allow you to create am amazing books is an entire quest in a single book and that is my Fanes of Barovia quest. It tells you the history and who the Fanes were, it tells you the shrines, the items that you need, the gems, and what's really amazing about Foundry is it allows you not only to create these books but create some really cool links so they can link to journals and items and actors. The second book in my particular campaign that's really important is a book about the history of uh, the Silver Dragon Order. Now my players have learned about the Silver Dragon Order, but how are they gonna get more information of maybe where it is and what happened? Well, I have an ancient book called The Fall of Argenvost, which tells the story of the Lord Argenvost coming hundreds of years ago and creating the Order of the Silver Dragon. And this book, if they read it, gives them clues on where to find information and what may have happened. So books are a great source, a resource for your players to have, learn about spells, backstories, legends, myths, even entire quests like I've incorporated here as well. So I always recommended adding a bookstore. Another thing that you can do with your um, one of your um, typical places like the blacksmith at the armory is it doesn't have to sell items that are as is in the player handbook. And you want to always make sure your sh shopkeepers fall in line with the theme of your campaign. Now in Curse of Strahd, there are no armories and Lord Strahd rules over Barovia. And the last thing that Strahd's going to want is an armory of somebody making weapons that could possibly be used against him. But I wanted to have an armory anyway. So how did I incorporate one? Well, I have a blacksmith here named Raleigh. And Raleigh is not technically allowed to build any weapons or create weapons or armor. He has found weapons and armor from old ancient battlefields. He's fixing and repairing the weapons of the town guards in Velaki. And he's found some maybe or traded for some for some other adventurers. Now he has an inventory of weapons that he's reluctant to sell. Some of them might be overpriced. Some of the weapons, for instance, aren't that great. For instance, if you look at the long sword that, whoops, the long sword that I've added to the game, I've actually changed the flavor text to say, you have seen far better example of long swords. And the details here is this weapon only is 1d6 when it normally should be 1d8. So all of Raleigh's blacksmithing skills, and he's a blacksmith, not really an armor, means that the weapons aren't up to shape as normally they would be found in the player's handbook. So make sure to incorporate stuff that fits within the narrative and the context of your campaign. The other place that I always like to add is what I call the dollar store or the store that has everything. And I have that store right here. It is, let me see, um, there it is. Now, this is the store that I just throw all that stuff in there that's not magical, it's just stuff that the characters may want for their campaign. And I just put it all in there. This is sort of like the dollar store, the general store, where it has everything in it. Game dice and cartography tools and forgery kits and all kinds of containers, chests, pouches, sacks, and pictures. It has all kinds of miscellaneous like mess kits and bells and ink pens and blankets. Just dump it all in there, come in with some random inventory, put some random prices in there. And this is the general store place to get all of that stuff. Now, this particular place, I don't put any magic items or any weapons. It's just gonna be the miscellaneous stuff. The other uh, store that I definitely like to have is that store where you're gonna get rumors. Now, in most campaigns, there's a there's that upper class, that uh, nobles, the lords, the, the masters, the burgermeisters, the mayors of the village or the town or the city. Now, a lot of the campaigns, you're trying to get information. Is this character good character, bad character? Are they conniving? Are they, you know, a, a spy? Where are you going to get this information? How are you going to learn about these lords and ladies and nobles and burgermeisters? Well, 
There was one unique store that I always like to add to my campaigns, and that's the bespoke tailor store. And the way I look at the tailor is this kind of invisible merchant. And I say invisible merchant because I imagine the nobles and lords and ladies going here to have dresses and their fine clothes made, and they can freely talk among themselves and share gossip and rumors about each other. And the servant, the tailor is kind of like the invisible servant. He's just there measuring and helping them, uh, you know, pick out the material that they want to use to have their dress or their suit made from. And so he overhears all the gossip. He knows the gossip of all the lords and ladies, all the noble and wealthy people in the village. Now, why would your players go to see the tailor? Well, your players will most likely be or should be invited to some dinner or some event. Maybe they're invited to dinner at the Burgermeister's home. Maybe they're invited to an event at the castle and or some place which they're going to have to interact with lords and ladies. And most likely your characters are just wearing armor and not having the clothes appropriate to attend a maybe black tie function or some particular function at one of these esteemed noble houses. And so they go there to have some clothes made and this is a great opportunity for them to learn about the gossip and news and the backstories of these lords and ladies. So when they do attend, well, they probably keep an eye on certain characters or maybe have questions that they can ask. So I'd like to add a tailor uh, into the campaign. The other uh, one that I always like to add is an herbalist or a potion shop. I have an herbalist here. This is my herbalist shop. Or I have a potion shop. The herbalist is just going to sell like crystals and various things like that, uh, alchemy stuff. And then the potion shop is going to be more like a druid potion shop, which is you're going to sell all kinds of interesting potions and health potions and stuff like that. And these characters add a different flavor to the campaign. They're going to have different information. So a general store, an armory, certainly the bookstore. Um, think about, uh, or like the tailor, think about these different places and how to weave their story, the knowledge that they may have that's unique to help your characters find that NPC, the entrance to the cavern, a particular item, some magic or some lore, or perhaps just gossip. Those town, uh, those shopkeepers and merchants in your village are a lot more than just someone selling you stuff that your players need. I hope this uh, video was useful. Please click like if you thought it was. Subscribe to my channel, and I hope you catch our stream on Thursday night, 6 p.m. UTC here on YouTube. This is Palm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, signing off, and may all your roles be critical 20s, and if they're critical ones, think about those critical failure tables. Thanks.